Hello, my dear viewers. Uh, welcome again on my scientific channel, discoversocialsciences.com. Uh, this is one more, uh, uh, one more update in my thread of research devoted to the role of cities in our civilization. As a matter of fact, I have just realized something very plain, something that already Adam Smith wrote in his treaty on the wealth of nations, that practically everything we call market, so every type of interaction when one social entity produces a surplus of something valuable and uh, sells it to other social entities, uh, all that social set which allows, for example, specialization, education, hmm, because we educate ourselves in order to acquire specific skill sets. Huh? And those skill sets make any point only in the context of some kind of market where those skills are marketable. Hmm? So all that social context that we take for granted is essentially based on cities. Huh? You don't really see much social differentiation or uh, much, so let's say, much new market emerging in the countryside. You need cities to make markets. I realized it like uh, by myself. I realized what Adam Smith already wrote by the end of the 18th century. So I go on into that specific avenue of research. Mm. Right now, in my research on cities and in the writing of my book on cities, I am in that quite laborious uh, phase when I already have like all the ideas in place. And so I know that I have valuable ideas to present. And now, I, and now I need to formalize them, to put them, to put them in order, to phrase them out correctly, to connect all the dots, all like the small empirical findings I have made on that path of research. So it is a phase which is, as I said, laborious. It takes time, yet I learned that it is necessary. So uh, this is a message to those of you who might be looking for some inspiration for doing science. Uh, science uh, has like phases. There are phases of high creativity when you just fire up with, uh, with ideas. And there are those phases of like uh, calm, consistent, grinding work, which serves them. Because science has any value when you can influence someone uh, with your science and you can influence when you can phrase it out correctly, when you can communicate it intelligibly. So before I go further, before I go into a, like a short overview uh, of what I am placing uh, online in this update, uh, a reminder. Before me in this video window, you can see an inscription, discoversocialsciences.com. If you go to the description box below the video, you can see the same link. You, 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 in the description box, you can see the link discoversocialsciences.com. You click on that link and it takes you to the website of my research blog, Discover Social Sciences. And on that website, you can find a written update with an abundant written development of uh, the main ideas and the main threads I am presenting in this video. This is how my YouTube channel is coupled with my blog. Huh? Uh, so you look for the update on my blog, which has the same title as this video. Hmm? Okay, I go forward. Uh, so I put together some kind of model of uh, uh, mutual connection between the number of distinct social roles in the society on the one hand and the head count of population. I tried to represent it in a very much economic way as a two-dimensional manifold. So uh, I guess that in a state of, let's say, dynamic equilibrium, as we grow in a number, 
uh, new social roles emerge for new humans that come to the world. And that sort of central balance is represented by this red line, uh, by this red second across the manifold. Above the second, above the red line of that equilibrium state, we have uh, the state of enhanced differentiation. The number of social roles that people can possibly endorse grows faster than the head count of a population. It is a phase of intense social change when you can see completely new skill sets forming in the society. With those skill sets, we have specific, uh, let's say, specific ways of learning them. Uh, it is a moment when new technologies pop up quite quickly. Hmm? You can see it, for, for example, now uh, when YouTube started to be like the real thing, you suddenly had uh, all that range of new professions uh, like YouTuber, uh, sound maker, sound mixer, uh, uh, camera operator, which are, like, uh, which are sort of which come from the movie industry, but they found like a specific expression uh, in the YouTube universe. Anyway, in that, in that state of enhanced differentiation, so uh, roughly speaking in the, in the blue blob on the, on the slide, it is intense social change. Uh, under the red line, so in the brown blob, uh, I tried to represent the state of like progressive settling down in the society. It is a state when the population demographically grows faster than the set of available social roles. So logically, then in that, let's say, brown state, uh, we have more and more humans per one available social role which of course uh, encourages standardization of that social role. It encourages uh, the creation of various institutions like the way of learning a given skill set, a diploma that corresponds to that skill set, an exam that serves to acquire that diploma, a certain business model that you need uh, to in implement with some capital in order to be able to play a given social role. So that's the phase of, of like settling down. And I guess that social change or the big cycles of social change are a kind of swing back and forth between those two states. So between that blue blob of enhanced differentiation and the brown blob of standardization. Now in the same manifold, I try to write down the role of cities. Hmm? Uh, so when the society needs internal differentiation, so when the society needs intense creation of new social roles, cities emerge as a, uh, cities emerge as let's say a, a dominant way of or a dominant method of creating new social roles. And, and here comes a question to my mind. It is rather an intuition. During the lockdown, we could see that digital platforms such as Zoom, YouTube, Instagram, or, or just emailing to each other, they allow social interactions and they can partly, only we do not exactly know to what extent, uh, they can partly replace uh, social, interaction, uh, social interactions in the real world. So if I assume that cities create that density of social interactions, which allows the creation of new social roles, then digital platforms could be like an imperfect substitute to cities in that respect. So in the blue state of internal differentiations, or enhanced uh, social differentiation, cities gain in importance. Uh, on the other hand, when the society is uh, settling down into a phase of standardization, 
So in the brown state, under the red line of equilibrium, then cities tend to get more and more similar to the countryside. They are not as important as they used to be. And now I go into the phase which is sort of important for me because I want to put together my thoughts on cities, so all that stuff on social roles and things, uh, with the possibility to use a neural network as a representation of collective intelligence. Uh, and uh, here I am trying to connect uh, the set of social entities, the set of social roles, and the vector of social outcomes, such as the density of urban population divided by the general density of population. This is the du divided by dg coefficient. And gen uh, generally in that vector that you can see on the slide, the vector VSE, the vector of social outcomes, I have listed those variables which on the one hand I can get in like the hard empirical form from available databases on the one hand and those variables in the same time are correlated are interestingly correlated uh, which which you could have read in my past updates so they are co uh, they are correlated with that density of urban population so this slide is very much like a mind map huh? i am trying to connect here uh, the mathematical side uh, of my research with that more, let's say, anthropological and economic side. And finally, the last step in that phase, I am trying to put together a theoretical proof, which is important for me, by the way, in my general research, a mathematical proof that a neural network, an artificial neural network can reliably represent the working of collective intelligence. And here I am using a theory, which I got acquainted with uh, quite recently, the, uh, the so-called interf uh, interface theory of perception. You can find more on it in my written updates on my blog. Anyway, I assume that the social role is a function, or F in round parentheses, of conscious action. And conscious action is, a, is like a loop, like a spiral. There is a state of the world uh, of which we derive some kind of conscious experience. That conscious experience is always sort of slanted, sort of imperfect, because we experience the world just in order to decide what to do. So in, in order to de decide about the action to take, when we take action, of course, it has consequences. Those consequences make like the next state of the world enriched with new exogenous phenomena that keep coming. And so we have that loop of conscious action. And I guess that conscious action is essentially something that we learn from and that we socially interact about. And learning and social interactions allow the creation of social roles. Okay, that would be it for that update. So this video, as usually, played the role of an editorial for my written update. So once again, you go to the description box below the video, you click on the link discoversocialsciences.com. That link takes you to the website of my blog under the same name, Discover Social Sciences. On the blog, on, on, the, on the website of my blog, you can find a written update which has the same title as this video. This is how they are coupled. So, as usually, I wish you to have fun with science and to have fun with life. Huh? Don't take yourself too seriously. Bye.